So hello and welcome class. So this is Fluid Mechanics and I'm Engineer Ronjan R. Garming. So today we are going to have additional problems on stability of floating bodies. So as for our learning objectives, first at the end of the session, students will be able to interpret the conditions in the problems, especially on stability of floating bodies. Of course, uh, we illustrate the free body diagram. And then relate to the conditions of equilibrium to stability of floating bodies. And finally, apply the conditions of equilibrium to evaluate the stability of floating bodies. So moving on to a problem. So in here, we have a solid block of wood weighs 6,290 newton per cubic meter. So this is in terms of unit weight. It is in the shape of a rectangular parallel pit having a 10 centimeter square base. If the block floats in fresh water with the square base horizontal, what is its maximum height for stable equilibrium in the upright position? So in here, we need to have the concept of the metacentric height. Remember that as mentioned previously, that metacentric height is the, the, the determining height for stability. So we set our GM or metacentric height to zero, wherein it is on the verge of instability. So let us illustrate the problem. So in here, we need to determine how much volume is partially submerged to that of the fresh water. So we apply the formula gamma of material divided by gamma of fluid times total volume. So the gamma of liquid here is 9,810 and then this solid block we'll have a gamma of 6,290 kN per cubic meter. So this has a square dimension. Top and bottom, we have 0.1 by 0.1 meters. So we denote the overall dim dimension or the overall height as H. So we substitute that into the equation the submerged volume here is 0.1 by 0.1. We denote the submerged height to be capital letter D or this is a draft. So this is equal to 6,290 divided by 9,810 multiplied by the area of the base 0.1 by 0.1 times the overall height. So, having that one, we can cancel out the common point 0.1 by point 0.1 to both left side and right side of the equation. So, in here, we can express the draft in terms of the height. So, in here, we came up with 0.64 of each, or that is 64% of each. Note that the dimension is more than half of the volume of the wooded block that is submerged in fresh water. Now we, we place that into the fresh water, having this to be 64% of each. Therefore, the remaining exposed height will be 0.36 of each. So we applied the formula on metacentric height, wherein it is the difference of MBO minus GBO. MBO is the distance of the metacenter to the center of buoyancy, while GBO is the distance of the center of gravity to the center of buoyancy. We set GM is equal to zero for critical condition. Again, this condition is actually 
that the object is on the verge of instability or rotation. So we set or locate our center of gravity since we have to determine distances here. And the center of gravity is actually half of our total height. And then below that is the center of buoyancy that is submerged volume. So the submerged volume, of course, we refer to the submerged height 0.64. And the location of BO is just the half of this dimension. And that would be 0.64 of H over 2, that is 0.32 of H. Therefore, with these dimensions, we can now compute for GBO. Now, GBO is the difference between 0.5 and 0.32. That will be equal to 0.18 of H. So, we work on the equation. 0 is the GM equal to the MBO. The MBO in the upright position is given by the formula I all over V sub B. I is the centroidal moment of inertia along the longitudinal axis of our object. So we divide that by the submerged volume. We less the calculated GBO 0.18 of H. So we further work on the equation. We're in our centroidal moment of inertia will be in the form of rectangle having the formula BH cube all over 12. So the total submerged volume is 0.1 by 0.1 by the submerged height 0.64 of H. Again, we list the calculated GBO. So we work further on the equation. We have the base and the height dimension along the longitudinal section as 0.1. So B is 0.1, H is 0.1. So divided by the submerged volume less our GBO. So notice that in here we have a common unknown in the equation, say we have H. So we simplify the numerical terms on the first term by calculating the numerator divided by the numerical values along the denominator. So that would yield to 1.302 times 10 raised to negative 3. And of course, we retain the variable h at the bottom. So minus 0.18 of h. So we merge the equation by the LCD of h so that the second term will be equal to negative 0.18 h squared. So h on the denominator will just be cross multiplied to 0. Hence, we can simplify our equation by manipulation so we find out that h would yield 2.085 meter. So this is the critical height we're in. The wooden block is on the verge of instability. Now moving on to the next problem. In here we have a rectangular boat 8 meter long by 6 meter wide and 2.4 meter height is submerged in fresh water by 1.8 meter. What is the maximum load P that can be placed at the edge of the boat without causing it to sink? Okay, so let us illustrate the problem. Placing the rectangular boat having an overall height of 2.4 meters. So we have a width of 6 meter and a length of 8 meters. And this is submerged by 1.8 meters. So therefore, 2.4 minus 1.8, we have 0.6 as an exposed height, not submerged in water. So this is actually the draft wherein P is not yet applied. So the condition in the problem is that we are going to place our P at the edge of the boat so that is this on the verge of submergence 
So this is the initial graph without P. So of course, if we are going to apply P here, our block will be pressed further. Okay, apply that into the axis of symmetry. And this will be pressed downwards further on its liquid surface. So if this is 0.6 meter initially, there will be an additional depth due to this load P. So we do not know yet this dimension, say we denote it by X. And this dimension is the point difference between 0.6 and X. So in here we are concerned with the exposed dimension 0.6 minus X because later when we are going to tilt this boat, that dimension should be part of the triangle form out of the wedge. So we start to tilt that one. So in here, we go inside our liquid surface to one end. So this is a critical condition wherein one side of the boat is submerged. So we take note that when tilting, we always go inside the axis of symmetry to our liquid surface. So this is the axis of symmetry. So we should intersect that to the liquid surface. So therefore, we can form a triangle here having a dimension of 3 meters and an angle of tilt, theta. And this is the exposed graph, 0.6 minus x. We note that each of the wedge or the triangle on both sides will have its distance because this will certainly form a couple. And that is two-thirds of the base as previous, previously discussed. So these are actually the distances between the center of gravity of that wedge. So here we have a downward delta Fb. Why downward? Because it is actually a deduction on the buoyant force. So before, without tilting, that triangle actually is part of the buoyant force because it is partially submerged in water. While in here, we have an additional delta Fb or buoyant force because the white triangle there will now be submerged if this object is being tilted. So in here, additional depth due to P will correspond to additional buoyant force. Take note, we are just working for the additional volume here. So the additional depth due to P is actually P is equal to the formula of the buoyant force delta fluid times the, the submerged volume. Again, it is reiterated here that because of P, there will be additional depth that is submerged. And a volume that is submerged corresponds to additional buoyant force. So from this formula, we have P is equal to the gamma fluid times the volume submerged. So the volume submerged, we are just going to focus ourselves to the additional depth, and that is actually x. So in here we also have moment cost tilting will correspond to a couple due to wedge shifting. Why? Because P was placed initially at the center and then being offset to the edge. So moment cost by tilting, this is due to the shifting of BO to BO prime. Hence, that would cause a delta buoyant force or a change in 
delta f, delta f b. And this is actually an additional. So the distance between delta f b is again two thirds of the base or the width of six. Now this is equal to the offset p here will have its moment arm three. So a moment arm will imply a couple here. Okay. So we we write that as p times three. Now delta buoyant force is equal to delta uh, gamma fluid times the volume. And the volume includes the area of the triangle, which is one half having a base of 0.6 minus x times 3. So to make it a volume, we, we need to multiply that by the length of 8. Of course, we carry over 2 thirds of 6 as part of the left hand equation. So this is equal to P here was derived to be gamma fluid times 6 by 8 by x. So we begin to multiply 3 here. Of course, this is to retain the moment arm of 3. So gamma fluid is common to both sides of the equation. So that is cancelled. And the 8 and the 6 as well as 3. So with that, the equation would be simplified to 0.6 minus x is equal to 3x. So we now manipulate our equation and solve for x. x will be equal to 0 0.15 meters. Now knowing x, we can now work on this equation. So we just substitute it directly. 9.81, 6 by 8, by 0.15, we can derive a force here equal to 70.632 kN. So this is actually the required force to sink this rectangular ball, wherein P here is placed on the edge of the ball. And this P is equivalent to 7,200 kilograms by the product or the multiplication of 70.63 to 1,000 to make it in Newton and then divide it by 9.81 to make it in kilograms. Okay, so this will be the answer to this problem. Moving on to the next in here, we have an empty open top steel pontoon 3 by 3 meters square and 1 meter deep floats in water with a draft of 0 0.6 meter. How much load L applied 0.75 of center is required to sink it? So of course, we first illustrate In this is one meter as overall draft or depth of the open top steel pontoon. The dimension is three by three meters square. Of course, when our draft is 0 0.6, the exposed height not submerged in water is 0.4 meters. So in here, we are going to apply L of center that is 0.75 meters. That is L. Now this is the initial draft without L. The final draft with, the, with L, this object will further be pressed and submerged with additional volume with the presence of L. So initially we have here the exposed height of 0.4 meters. But because of L, there will be an additional depth here due to L. So again, we do not know this one. We do not by X. And the exposed height now will, will be 0.4 minus X. 
we take the object and place one edge to be at the point of submergence. Again, we note that when we, whenever we tilt, we coincide the axis of symmetry to the liquid surface. So by that, the triangles form, wherein this dimension is 1.5, we have an angle of tilt and 0.4 minus x as the exposed height. Of course, there will be a wedge triangle formed out of the tilting and the distance between that uh, two change in uh, volume will have two thirds of the base referring from the triangle. Two thirds of the width. We have this as delta Fb and that as delta Fb going upwards and going downwards. So, of course, those delta Fb will form a couple. So, in here, additional depth due to L will correspond to additional buoyant force, where in L will cause an additional volume and additional buoyant force of gamma fluid times the volume submerged. So, L will be equal to gamma fluid times 3 by 3 times the submerged height x. And the moment cause tilting will correspond to copper due to wedge shifting. So delta Fb times the moment arm, two-thirds of our width, 3, is equal to this L, which is offset at 0.75, will cause us a couple here. So that is simply L times 0.75. That is the couple, L by 0.75. So we further work on the equation. Delta Fb is gamma fluid times the volume of the submerged portion of the triangle, that is 1 half, 0.4 minus x times 1.5. So to make it a volume, we, we need to multiply that by the length 3. We retain here the moment arm two thirds of the width is equal to L here is gamma fluid times 3 by 3 by x. Now we start to cancel out terms. First, we need to retain here 0.75 as our moment arm of L to form a couple. So we cancel out gamma fluid. 3 dimension and another 3 here. So the equation will simplify to 0.4 minus x is equal to 1.5 times x. So of course by manipulation we can get the value of x equal to 0.16 meters. So knowing our x we need, we are now ready to utilize this equation in order to solve for the required L. So L is a direct substitution and we have 14.12 kN for that. So 14.12 kN times 1000 divided by 9.81 will be in terms of kilogram. We have 1440 kilograms. And this is the required L to sink this empty open top steel pontoon. So that is for this problem. So moving on to the next problem, we have if the center of gravity of a ship in the upright position is 10 meter above the center of gravity of the portion underwater. The displacement being 1,000 metric tons and the ship tip 30 degrees causing the center of buoyancy to shift sidewise 8 meters. What is the value of the moment in kilogram per meter? Of course, we illustrate the ship. 
in the upright position. So in the upright position, we need to establish our G and the submerged portion BO. Okay, according to the problem, this is being equal to 10 meter. So the center of gravity of a ship in the upright position is 10 meter above the center of gravity of the portion underwater and that refers to B. So having that, we now start to tilt the ship and of course BO will shift sideways sidewise as BO prime and then we project this upwards vertically and project our axis of symmetry intersecting to that projected, projected vertical line. The intersection is actually our meta center. So on that meta center, of course, there will be formed an angle of tilt equivalent to 30 degrees. So the concentration of the weight will be on G and the concentration of the buoyant force will be on the BO prime. So if there would be a distance X here, there will cause a couple. And of course, we need to place also the condition the problem as the sidewise displacement of BO to BO prime of 8 meters. So the couple here will be computed by the by multiplication of x to that of the weight or the buoyant force. So in the meantime, we need to relate sine of 30 to that of the, the given dimension 8 and MBO. Because MBO would relate to our GBO later to get the metacentric height, which is actually the reference of stability. So solving for our MBO, MBO is equal to 16 meters. Of course, the writing moment will be equal to the weight or the buoyant force times GM sine of theta. So the buoyant force here will be equal to 1,000 or 1 million kilogram because as mentioned last meeting, we have the displacement refers to the buoyant force. And the given buoyant force here is 1,000 metric tons. And the conversion factor is that 1 metric ton is equal to 1,000 kilogram. We multiply 1,000 to the given 1,000. That would yield 1 million kilograms. So working on the writing moment, we just place here the calculated displacement or the buoyant force multiplied by this term, gm sine of theta. So if we could only determine GM, then we can already compute for the moment. So GM is equal to MBO minus GBO. So MBO is equal to 16 and GBO is equal to 10. Therefore, the metacentric height is the difference of these dimensions. So it will yield to 6 meters. Of course, we simply substitute that into our equation to yield with our unknown, that is the writing moment, equal to 3 million kilogram meter. So this is the writing moment of the ship. So next problem. A rectangular scow, 9 meter wide, 15 meter long and 3.6 meter high has a draft in sea water of 2.4 meters. Its center of gravity is 2.7 meters above the bottom of the scale. Determine the initial metacentric height. 
So we illustrate the scale submerged in seawater. So we have here 3.6 meters as an overall depth of this rectangular scow. So this scow has 9 meter what? 9 meter width and then 15 meter length. We place the trough 2.4, therefore the exposed side will be the difference of 3.6 minus 2.4 that is equal to 1.2 meters. So we place our submerged center of buoyancy as 1.2. This is actually the half of 2.4 meters. And then in here, the center of gravity is al already specified in the problem. And it is 2.7 meters above the bottom of this cow. So knowing the location of both G and B, referring to the bottom portion, therefore we can just get the difference of those dimension and come up with GBO. GBO is equal to 2.7 minus 1.2, which is equal to 1.5 meter. So MBO in a regular parallel, we can apply this formula, b squared all over 12d times quantity 1 plus tangent squared theta all over 2. So hence, MBO, we substitute the width of 9, the draft of 2.4, and the angle in the upright position. The angle in the upright position is actually 0 degrees. So, we can get here MBO is equal to 2.81 meters. Now, the metacentric height is given by this formula. MBO minus GBO. MBO is 2.81 and GBO is 1.5. And GM can be derived to be 2.81 minus 1.5. That is equal to 1.31 meters. So this is actually the metacentric height initially. So when we say initially that refers to the metacentric height in the upright position. So moving on to another problem. In here we have a ship with a waterline cross section as shown has a displacement of 5,350 kilonewton. Determine the maximum distance GBO that the center of gravity may lie above the center of buoyancy if the ship is remain stable. So we have a composite area here seen on top. So this is actually a top view. We have a combination of a triangle and a rectangle having those dimensions. So MBO here in the upper position will be equal to I all over submerged volume. We take note that the I in the equation is the centroidal moment of inertia along the longitudinal axis. So the longitudinal axis is that axis. That line is parallel to our boat or the ship. So I will be the combination of I of the triangle plus the I of that rectangle. We should recall here the formula for those I's or moment of inertia. So if we refer to our figure, in here we will be utilizing two triangles. Why two triangles? Because if we could recall our formula wherein if we have a triangle with B and H having our reference line on the base the formula for the moment of inertia is BH cube all over 36 
But if we have a centroidal moment of inertia located at the center, of course, the centroidal moment of inertia is calculated to be BH cubed all over 12. So in this case, we are going to use this formula for the two triangles. So for our rectangle, recall that when we have a rectangle of B and H, and if we have this line as our reference line, the moment of inertia at that line or at that axis is BH cube all over 3. Well, the centroidal moment of inertia along the axis of the centroid is equal to BH cube all over 12. So this will be the formula to be utilized in this case. So working on the centroidal moment of inertia, we have two triangles here, and we just apply the formula BH cube all over 12 plus a single rectangle because the longitudinal axis happens to be coinciding to the centroid of our rectangle. So expanding the formula and substituting our dimension for the two triangles, it has a base of 7.5 and a height of half of 7.5, that is 3.75 meters. So we add the rectangular inertia, we have 30 by 7.5 cubed all over 12. We calculate I and I would yield to 1,120.61 meter raised to 4. We execute summation forces vertical is equal to zero. So we can say that the formula for the buoyant force is gamma fluid times the submerged volume. We have 5,350 is equal to 9.81 times the submerged volume. And we can derive to the submerged volume equal to 545.36 cubic meter. So notice that we have already obtained I and the submerged volume for us to calculate our MBO. So MBO, we, we directly substitute the value of I and the value of the submerged volume. And MBO will be equal to 2.05 meters. So for the metacentric height, MBO minus GBO. Again, we set GM is equal to zero for critical conditions. So this is equal to 2.05 less GBO. So in here, we just simply find, find out that GBO is actually equal to power MBO. And that is actually the maximum distance of GBO that the center of gravity may lie above the center of buoyancy if we are in critical equilibrium. So this ends our session for today. Thank you for listening and have a good day.